Uh, I'm going to, well, Emily, I was just, just going to say, I was just saying to uh, to Carl, I really enjoyed the film. I watched it earlier, literally earlier today. So it's very fresh. In my- <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. you. Imagine the first time you're watching that movie being like nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it must be later there, huh? No, no, no. Oh, it's 9 a.m. for him when he was. Oh, it's my, my God. Favorite, it's my favorite time to watch films. I, 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 I just, huh. I don't know. I'm a big fan. It's like, I think I've taken it from film festivals. You know, when you wake up and you always get that first screening of the day at like 9 a.m. Mm. I've just, it's just become my favorite time. I think I'm at my, have a cup of coffee. I'm at my most invested. I say that. I would love to watch oh. this at like midnight, you know, one of those sort of midnight screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. um, but anyway, I'm going to, I'll start with, uh, with you, um, Emily. I mean, it, obviously this film has a kind of such a, a memorable and distinctive tone. It's kind of offbeat and unique in a way that I've not seen the movie for such a long time. Did you get a sense of that in the screenplay or was that something that even took you by surprise when you saw the sort of movie put together? Yeah, absolutely. The, the movie was kind of pitched to me as like this Napoleon Dynamite style punk rock story. And when I first read the script, I was super excited because I'd never seen a character like Patty before. Um, she really has this incredible arc and this journey throughout the movie that, um, you know, she, you go from uh, thinking you know her in the beginning of the film to really knowing her by the end in a really uh, special way. Um, And then I think while we were making it, that's when we really knew that there would be a really deep beating heart of the film. We didn't really, we we kind of um, didn't know that it would be so personally meaningful to us until we started making it and realizing how, uh, how much we were pouring ourselves into the characters. Yeah, and Kyle, I mean, you had permission here just to go completely nuts. That must have been such good fun. Because I guess it's one, because it is one of those things. I think that kind of those tendencies are kind of within all of us, but society dictates that we kind of have to suppress them and be right. normal. But you had this kind of chance here just to be a bit mad, which must have been great fun. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely, it was, you know, like you said, it's permission to kind of just be a little, you know, I, I remember in my head, I was like, all right, I'm at the airport. I'm going to start now. (laughs) And like, I went up to the ticket lady and got my tickets and walked away. And like, in my mind, I like, didn't say thank you. And I was like, oh, I feel terrible. (laughs) But I was like, this is where I'm going to start. I have to start somewhere. Um, But no, I mean, it, it, it it was there, you know, there is a, a fun rebellion to it, but there's also, you know, one of the things that I've kind of come as I've walked away from it where, where it's a good, it's a good thing. And, you know, I I think Emily, as she, you know, she'll tell you too, she's, she learned stuff from Patty as well. It's like, there is something nice about having played somebody who just truly is like so authentically himself. And if you don't like that, you can, you know what I mean? It, 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 it doesn't matter. Like, and I, and I think that's, and I think that's a nice lesson. You know, I feel like people censor themselves or, or, or almost like change their personalities around different people to try to be different things for, you know, to please other people. And I, I don't know. I think there's something very powerful about just truly being yourself and comfortable as yourself and in your own skin, good, bad, or ugly. And, and, um, and there was there was something empowering about that, you know. Uh, you know, that's kind of a lesson I I stepped away from that movie with is like maybe focus a little more on that, you know. Um, but also, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, who doesn't want to throw a chair through a plate glass window and light some shit on fire? And <laughs> you know, like let's go. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, on, on the kind of flip side to that, even though there must be a kind of cathartic, kind of fun element to it. I mean, the character, um, he's quite, Simon is quite angry and you know, he's got a lot of anger within him. Can that be quite tiring to to get yourself in that headspace every single day for a, a, a few weeks? Yeah, yeah, there definitely is that flip side to it where it is, it is exhausting. I mean, living in that heightened state all day, um, it really is. It's, it's tiring. It's hard. It's hard to be angry at the world. You know what I mean? It's hard to, <laughs> to, to push back like that, but I mean, it, it true, true to life. I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think this last, you know, year, year and a half with everything going on in the world has proved that. I mean, I think everybody's tired, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough living like that mm-hmm. and feeling that way. You know? 
And, and Emily, I mean, you mentioned the kind of the strength of your character, but I mean, she's a kind of unique female lead, unlike many I've seen before. When you got the script, was there a real sense of like, finally? Because I guess you, I mean, you sort of get sort of scripts come your way and characters come your way, but this feels like a, the sort of character we don't see enough of in cinema, but the sort of characters we need to see mm. more of them. Yeah, I saw so much of myself in Patty in a way that I don't, I, I, I guess I don't really encounter a lot when I get scripts. And, um, you know, Patty is a, kind of modeled around a, a period of my life when I felt very much like her, very much like didn't know who I was and what my value was and what I had to offer the world. And so to kind of go back and um, experience that again, but with a different perspective, uh, like knowing Patty's strengths and seeing who she is and what she is capable of made me sort of fall back in love with that part of myself that I, in my brain, I'd been like, oh, I was so awkward. I was so horrible. I, I didn't know who I was, but really I was so open to the world. I was so um, like open to experiences and present. And that's what Patty is. Um, to kind of go back and fall in love with those parts of myself was really cathartic. Mm. Yeah, because obviously you say, you know, you put a lot of yourself into the character, but do, 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 do you learn a lot from characters you play too? I always wonder that with actors, and when, mm. just when you sort of play a character, they've got these kind of certain traits that are really kind of um, endearing or kind of uh, kind of empowering. I just wonder if, they, if you almost adopt them in, in, in real life as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think every character I get is a new opportunity to explore a, diff a different side of myself. You know, the these characters are, I'm never going to be exactly like this character. And so um, I feel like I, I learned so much about myself when I kind of step into a different skin. Um, and I, I really walked away from Patty feeling um, like a new sense of confidence in a way and a new sense of um, uh, pride in just kind of being uh, my, myself and being a weirdo and the um, the joy of that you know the uncensored joy of just letting yourself kind of be yourself. Mm. Kyle do you think it's it's we're getting more and more kind of um, comfortable being weirdos <laughs> and what I mean by that is <laughs> when I when I was growing up all like like the, the word nerd or geek was kind of this right. kind of people would use it as a kind of cuss word to others but now it feels a bit like we're owning it a bit there's more ownership over like yeah that's, mm. that's who we are well I think it's good I mean I think it's I think <clears throat> you know it's I think people are realizing like weird strange it it, it means more along the lines of like unique or you know what I mean like it's yes it, it's, yeah. it's it's it, it's always been used was, to alienate Right. Where it was almost like back in the day when they put everybody on medication, you know, because they were like, well, this kid's, di it's like, no, 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 no. This kid is something different and special going on that you need to nurture rather than tone down. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, when you look at the world, there's infinitely more, I guess, nerds, weirdos, whatever, whatever you want to say, like mm. there's, there's, that's more of what the world is made up of. The world is more made up of special, unique individuals than it is like, you know, these Adonises cut from stone that are considered like the cool, you know, what you should strive for, right. whatever. Like, it's like, and that's what I loved about this. It was, it was, it was a relationship like I've never encountered before in a script. It was two characters that like normally would maybe be like the side character friend in another film. And it, it was put front and center. And it was like the reason people relate to Simon and Patty so much is because I think everybody has a little bit of Simon or a little bit of Patty in them in some way or a combination of both that it's like, this is more what real life is like. Yes. These people and like, you know, Patty on the bus is more what somebody's real life could be like than, you know, the pull your ponytail down and suddenly you're beautiful kind of thing, you know, like, even though we do kind of joke about that in the kitchen, we sort of have that moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's not like, you know, it's not like, it's not like a 90s rom-com moment. It's like, mm. it's, it's, it's a look at the, at the, it's, it's this kind of heightened look, but it is really a look at the real world in a way. And, and that's another thing, like when people, I think people's only real gripe about the film that I've noticed so far is the first 20 minutes. Mm. But I think that's because they don't want to face 
what reality is. They don't want to believe that people still talk like that. They would rather believe and swipe it under the rug and be like, nobody uses these words. Nobody says these right. things. Nobody treats people that way. And it's like, that is exactly how this happens. Like at every festival, yeah. you have somebody raise their hand and be like, I was Patty on the bus. You know what I mean? So yeah, I do. I think we are embracing that. I think, and I think it's important. I think it's important to embrace people's individuality you know, and what makes them unique and special. And I think films like that kind of push that to the front or films yeah. like that, I should say, push that to the front. And I think it's important. Yeah. And I think also just to add to that, that the weirdos and the outliers are the folks that are the catalyst for change and progress 100%. And, yes. and are the inventors and the writers and the right. people who really um, allow us to see the world in a different um, opening perspective, I guess. Yes. Well said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Well the said on is, you. Yeah. <laughs> the, world, the world goes round thanks to the patty and the patties and Simons of the world. Exactly. Uh, well, someone's got to burn it down and then yeah. someone's got to put it back together, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but you, I mean, yeah, Emily, I mean, you guys have sort of mentioned the, the, the strength of their relationship. But what I loved about this, my favorite thing was how they help each other subtly. That it was, it's so mm. subtle, but the subtle because for a film that is so heightened and a film where everything is kind of exaggerated a little bit it is actually the subtlety isn't it that makes this kind of what it is mm. well i think a great sorry i just want to hit this real quick um, i think a great part of that is you had mentioned the script before right and you're talking about when we read it was it heightened and all that it was it was it was like a tone i'd never read a thing you know it was one of those like whoa this is really you know a, a wild kind of read but then what Adam did that was so great and I'll love him forever for it is like he trusted me and Emily mm -hmm. and he allowed us to find our own way with Simon and Patty and humanize them in the way that we felt was the right way for these for these characters and I think and I think that allows for those subtle quiet moments and for those little like really lived in personal moments while you're also living in this kind of heightened reality. You know, mm -hmm. he trusted me and Emily and I, and I'm forever grateful for that. You know, it was, it was such a collaboration. Um, um, yeah. 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 You get a real, like, it's not often you see a movie and you just get such a sense for the director's voice in a film. But I yeah. mean, this is, mm. this is this has got Adam all over it. Um, Emily, what was he like to collaborate with on, on this project? Oh, yeah. he's amazing. I mean, he, uh, so uh, talk about trust. He When he wrote the script, producers were like, what's the song going to be? What's the song? And he was always very adamant that the song happened organically and that it, it was written by the character who was going to play Patty. And so he had me write like stream of consciousness, Patty poetry. And then on the second day we were in Detroit, which is yeah. wild. Um, we wrote it together in a room, um, kind of like how it happens in the movie in one day and recorded it. And it, it, that I've never had the opportunity to have such a collaborative experience in making a film to actually have a hand in the writing and the, the uh, structure of the character and their inner life. It was really an incredible experience. Um, we also had two weeks of rehearsal before we even started shooting, which never happens in film and TV. And so that was incredibly invaluable because we were really able to get to know each other and learn each other's languages and build the trust and respect. And now I, I wanna make everything with Kyle and Adam. Yeah. Yeah. I love them so much. We really found a, um, a really nice trio and yeah. trust in this one, trust in this one was huge because these characters yeah. are so, you know, even when Patty is so, she is still so big, you know what I mean? Like it's right. such a, it's such a brave, the way you play Patty with such a brave, like bold way of playing that character that it's like, you know, and I, like we talked about earlier, like there is no Simon without Patty there, without that right. trust that we built without that thing, like Emily, and where we bonded and how we, you know, got to know each other and built that trust. Emily allowed me to push things further than I've ever really pushed them because I was never scared of falling flat. I always right. knew I had somebody who was going to catch me. You know, she was like my safety net opposite me every day. So like, 
we built these amazing relationships. And then also we trusted Adam completely to be like, good, or take it here, move it left, move it right. You know, he, he was like that fine tuning, mm. you know, it was, it was such a really kind of magic combination of things. Um, yeah. It was just an the amazing feelings work. very mutual, Kyle. Yeah. So, so it just sounds like a really special project to have worked on has it has it made it harder working on other things since because i guess not every yeah. <laughs> kind of collaborative <laughs> and, yeah yeah i yeah. mean I, yeah, I don't, it's uh yeah <laughs> no one to say it but like you know I mean, it's like summer camp dude like it was yeah. like it was like you know you're crying to your friends and writing notes to each other at the end of it like i'll see you know like you don't want it to end yeah and it's exciting too because i just feel like because kyle and i were able to really push deeply into these really bizarre characters now i just want to see what other characters we can push right. through <laughs> together you know like what else are we gonna make yeah. and that's so exciting and such a blessing um yeah. and also i just want to touch on like part of adam's specificity and why it was so great to work with him is he not only wrote it he directed it and he edited it he did, so he yeah. knew and he's a he he's a cam op like he's a dp he knows how to shoot. And so he knew in the moment, you know, is this usable? Is this going to be something that works for the edit? Oh, I don't think so. Let's shift it. And that was really amazing. That's a, that's a whole nother level of movie making. You don't really get as an actor to collaborate with the editor. And the editor is like one of the most important people in the movie at the end. He mined so many cool little, like just even little things. Like I, there's this like, one shot right before the punk show, like where it opens and I turn and the way I turn and like blow the smoke. It's one frame of like, but it's like <laughs> so specific that it like, he must've just grabbed that and been like, that's from take five. I'll take that one second, <laughs> throw it in here. Like it was such small stuff where you're like, holy God, dude, you went to yeah. town with this thing. And it really makes the movie and it really helps guide us in terms of our performances to know that kind of thing. Well, you just trust him completely. You know, you know yeah. he's gonna he's gonna take the best of what he's got. I mean, yeah. Sounds, awesome. sounds like we need a dinner in America too. Really, <laughs> go. <Yeah. laughs> yes, please. But you talk yeah. about trust behind the lens. I mean, obviously that extends as well. I mean, Ben Stiller is a producer on this. I just wonder because obviously when you've got that name attached, that's always that's only going to do the project um, good. Um, just wonder was he was he involved at all? Did he was he on set? Did you get the chance to speak too much about the project? Was he more of a kind of did he take a bit of a, a backseat in this instance? His partner, Nikki Weinstock, was on set with us all the time. Um, he was really our, uh, like our main hero for this movie. Um, but it was also so exciting to be able to work with Ben's company and, and Ben Stiller. I mean, he's an idol of mine. And I think like the comedy aspect of Dinner in America is something that really aligns with like his style. And um, I'm really looking forward to meeting him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he definitely, you know, they definitely champion the the film, you know, so he's, while he he was you know they're involved he i think we lost emily no, um, but yeah nikki was um nikki was the guy on set and and they've they've been from what i've heard with adam they've been super good to adam they you know what i mean so it was just a really good oh emily texted me her computer died okay. <laughs> uh she said she'll be back in a second but um yeah it was great it would be awesome to um meet him one day but um we weren't able to I think he was also like prepping I think he was doing that Danamora show at the time I think he was like smack in the middle of prepping all that like he's a busy dude <laughs> those people when he says he's got plans he's probably got plans <laughs> yeah. but I mean Nikki was on set and he was super involved you know sometimes you have like producers and stuff who are like from as far away as possible but like Nikki was there. He was front and center, really, really, really supportive. It was just a good group, like all around the crew, the cast, everybody in Detroit. Like we had such, I mean, for an indie film, I think we had something like insane, like 80 speaking parts or something, you know, and it was a ton of local guys and, and everybody was just, I don't know, everybody came to play. It was cool. Well, well, I was going to, I'll ask you while Emily's not here. And I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not expecting uh, too much detail about your character in, in the next screen movie. And I won't even ask, but what I will, 
what I will ask is it it must you must be very it must be so excited to be a part of something I mean we talk about kind of like the Patty and Simon the kind of iconic nature of those characters which it does feel like now they're becoming iconic but that scream character the the, the look of the the mask and stuff it has yeah. got place in kind of cinematic history oh, just being in that movie and being part of that franchise that must be such a an exciting thing just as just as a fan above anything else yeah no I mean you know like everybody else I grew up not everybody but like you know my generation like I grew up watching you know watching that movie you know I'll, I'll never forget the opening with Drew Barrymore and like how horrifying all that was and um so yeah to be a part of it was really just exciting and fun and and you know to get on set and play in that world it's 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 cool and like no bullshit I think it's going to be really good like which is you know and I and Emily will tell you I will sh I will bad mouth <laughs> anything I'm in <laughs> I have no you know I have no problem if I don't think standards. it's good. Yeah, if I don't think it's good, even if I'm in it, I will let you know. I'll go through my MDB right now and tell you everything I think that sucks. But, but you'll also <laughs> work your ass off and you'll make sure that you're yeah. doing the work and that sure. you're good in it and that you you carry forward the integrity of the story, even if it's not fully. And Thanks. that's what I love about you. Thanks, um, so yeah, dude, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be good. And Emily, I love you so very much. <laughs> I love you so very much. Sorry, I lost you guys for a no, second. Well, I'm curious to be back for about a time. Anyway, I know you guys have got other stuff to get on with, but thank you so much for chatting to me today. It's been a real pleasure. And honestly, like I, I've been obviously watching it today, but it's one of those films I'm definitely going to go back and watch again because your performances are great. And the characters just, they feel already like iconic. The names, the look of it, it just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. You have Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. There is a dinner in America too. Hopefully, we can do a, a junkie like this in London. Who knows? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Thank All you right. so much. Take it easy, Thank man. You. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.